Welcome. I'm Laura Fleek and I am a librarian with the Fresno County Public Library. I am very happy to welcome back the Fresno Master Gardeners for another wonderful presentation. First, just a few housekeeping details. This program is being recorded and will be posted to the library website and the Master Gardener websites within the next week to two weeks. So don't worry if you miss something. Sharon Matson, our guest speaker today, will be taking questions at the end of her presentation. You can submit your questions anytime during the presentation in the Q&A box. I'll be, keeping, I'll be keeping track of any questions to pass on to Sharon, so feel free to submit those at any time. And lastly, Master Gardener Waz Tampone is also here today and we'll tell you about all the wonderful upcoming Master Gardener programs after our Q&A. Okay, let's get to our program. I am very happy to introduce Fresno Master Gardener Sharon Matson, who will be talking about the beautiful and unique flora and fauna of the Sierra Nevadas. Thank you, Laura. I'm glad to be here today. I um, have many slides of different wildflowers and other fauna from the central Sierra Nevadas. Um, I don't profess to be an expert on wildflowers. I just enjoy them. I enjoy taking pictures of them and I want to share them with you today as well as throwing in other um, birds, animals, and critters to make it interesting. Um, my husband, Dale, took a picture of all the, almost all the animals, because uh, he's got a big lens and he can get the broad shot where I get the uh, short shots. So let me begin. And I will be going through this quickly because there's a lot of slides. So, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm going to start in um, Fresno at Millerton Lake. There's a surprising variety of wildflowers there. Um, the CNP at the end of the flower name is a California native plant, which almost all of these flowers are. The first name is the common name and the middle is the botanical name. Here's the bald eagle. Uh, Millerton Lake has several different ones. Fiesta flower, a bald eagle with a seagull for a meal. Grape lupin. This is uh, the channel above Millerton Lake with the um, plateau, the table mountains above it. This is a juvenile bald eagle with a coot. Um, the bald eagle doesn't get its white head until it is five years old. So you can kind of judge the age of it by how much white it has in its feathers. California wave wing, red-tailed hawk. We have lots of those in the Fresno area, top of telephone poles and light fixed <clears throat> light standards. Field sun cup. This was along the shore of Millerton Lake. This was at the beginning of one of our hikes, a gopher snake. Looks a lot like a rattlesnake, but no rattle and no square head. Speckled fairy fan. Roadrunner, which also is was near uh, Millerton. Pink spine flower. This is the San Joaquin River Gorge coming into Millerton Lake again with the uh, tabletop mountains and your fiddle neck, which is very prevalent in the spring, and a close up of the fiddle neck. A 
bobcat, which we saw uh, up at Millerton, just in the brush on the side of the lake. Stargillia. There's many varieties of um, native milkweed in um, California, and this is just one of them. Wild turkey, again, along the shore of Millerton. A variety of flowers at Temperance Flat, which is up the channel, upstream from Millerton. Bully heads. These are um, American white pelicans, which were in the lake, and they are uh, just migrating through. You don't see them very often. Larkspur. This apple oak gall is created by a wasp that lays its eggs in the oak tree. And this is the oak's reaction to that, the egg, eggs being laid on it, and it, it forms these galls. So if you see the galls on the oak trees, that's why they're there. Here's a bald eagle carrying grass to its nest. Now we're on the north side of Millerton, um, uh, the Madeira side with a snowy egret in Lupin. Jimson weed, this is pretty poisonous. Um, an interesting thing is the uh, flowers unfurl. And before they unfurl, if you look at them from the top, it's quite an interesting design. Pale oak, uh, sorry, pale owl's clover. Coyote. There you go. Uh, Foothill pretty face. Douglas sandwort. Golden yarrow. California man root. It has the E, a very uh, horrible looking uh, seed pod. A golden eagle. There are some nesting golden eagles at Millerton Lake. And we followed a nest. Here is a nest at the lake. And um, there were two chicks in it. We had seen two eggs and then we saw two chicks and came back about a week later and there were three chicks which uh, puzzled us, but we knew that um, sometimes the eagles will lay their eggs sequentially. And But as we came back, we noticed that the two of the two chicks were black and white, and the other chick was more brown. It was smaller. It didn't have the feathers on its legs. And we began to realize that it was actually a red-tailed hawk chick. There was one documented case of this in um, British Columbia in a bald eagle nest, and they um, decided that it must have been the mother eagle robbed the red-tailed hawk nest and brought the bird back to the nest to feed to its chicks. The, the chick went peep peep and the mothering instincts took over and they raised it rather than killed it. So here they've grown up some more. The two golden eagle chicks on the left, the mother bringing food to the nest and their um, hawk chick on the right. And we did see all three chicks fledge from the nest. And this is my husband, Dale. And the nest is just off his right cuff down in that tree. And this is the kind of lens he has. And the, he's taking a picture of one of the parents. California buckeye, hairy lace pod, which is named after its seed pod rather than the flowers. The flowers up on the top right are kind of small and the seed pods on the bottom right are on my pant lake, kind of showing how interesting they are. Botus clarkia, elegant clarkia, deer weed, 
mini flowered monkey flower. And also on the bottom left is green rock posy lichen. Mountain jewel flower with a bug up on the top right. I always am surprised at taking pictures of the flowers and coming home and looking out on the computer and there's often a bug that I hadn't even noticed. Speckled clarkia with um, Milliton Lake. You can see there in the background. California quail. Tory monkey flower. Just happened to see a whole herd of deer at one point in time. Mushroom. Acorn woodpaper, woodpecker. Harvest brodia. American kestrel, which is one of the smaller bird of prey. This is the Feingold Creek Preserve uh, by the Sierra Foothill Conservancy, and you have to be with their docents to see the preserve and the creek, but it's full of wildflowers in the spring. Miner's lettuce, whisker brush, which gets its name because it looks kind of like a whisker brush. Blue dicks. Popcorn flower, a whole field of popcorn flower. Pacific sanicle, big heronville. And this is a non-native. Uh, you can see by the NN at the end of the name. Chinese houses, purple owls clover. Silver bush lupin, western red bud, and the seed pods of the uh, red bud. Bollinger's woodland star, another um, mushroom turkey tail, small baby blue eyes, California saxifrage. Western bluebird, baby blue eyes, bird's eye gilia, common facilia, and a cottontail rabbit. This is the Chowchilla River, which is northwest of Fresno that flows into um, Eastman Lake. And there was a bald eagle nest along there. Heliotrope. Deltoid balsam root, chick lupin, a Sierra newt. The trail was filled with them on a, after a rainy day. We were driving home from Eastman Lake and I um, told Dale to stop because I had seen something. So we backed up and it was this chick in this um, nest and it ended up being a great horned owl chick. And you can see in the top left corner there is the mother and then the two chicks in the nest. Now we're down at the Kings River and there was a eucalyptus tree that had um, several nests in it. This is one nest with a parent and a chick. And here you can see I think there's eight or nine nests and each of them have a heron in them. And the chicks sometimes are visible. And then the next year when we came back, there wasn't a heron in sight because you can see on the bottom right that a bald eagle took over one of the nest sites. And here it is with its chicks. Fremont's tidy tips. Foothill Penstemon. Now we've gone up on the Upper Kings River past Pine Flat Lake, and this is called a bush monkey flower. Fremont's bush mallow. mallow. And if you're up in the mountains uh, in the transition from spring to summer, this is one of the last flowers you'll see. Farewell to spring. 
Williamson's Clarkia. Just happened to come upon this. Uh, there were dozens and dozens of uh, swallowtail butterflies. Gaping Kekalia, Woodland Star. We used to have a cabin up near Crestman's store and we had a um, game camera. So we never saw a mountain lion, but that's the cabin and that's a mountain lion. And this is around the cabin, California poppy, a brown bear, which we never saw except with a game camera, mountain misery, bobcat, Seep spring monkey flower, a ring-tailed cat, which is not in the cat family. It's actually a relative of the raccoon. Western bit stork, tarantula, and a whole herd of wild turkeys. You can see the trees in the background that are affected by that bark beetle that killed them off, and this. Uh, the creek fire went through this area and burnt everything to the ground, including the cabin. Winter vetch, which is non-native. Hartwig iris. Now we're down in Sequoia, Sequoia National Park. And this is a pictographs left by the Indians at Hospital Rock. And this is about a six mile hike into Pear Lake. Alpine glow and parsley fern on that hike, conifer egg fungus, Douglas flux, fireweed with a red elderberry, rock fringe, Sierra stone crop. And you can see the variety of color on the trail along going to Pear Lake, Mountain Jewel Flower, Meadow Penstemon, Pussy Paw, Red Stem Monkey Flower. This flower is only about of a quarter of an inch wide. Mountain Spirea, Cream Bush, Mountain Pride Penstemon, a yellow berry be bellied marmot. This was in uh, a meadow in Sequoia National Park. And um, Indian rhubarb or umbrella plant next to Viola Falls in Kings Canyon. And here's the flower on the umbrella plant. Goldenrod with a bee. And a, a bear. Dale was hiking on a trail and came upon a bear and it was a very polite bear. It got off the trail and walked around and he uh, <laughs> was not fearful. Wood fern, checker smot, and uh, is the butterfly, the name of the butterfly, and then sneezeweed. Crimson columbine next to a creek. Green gentian, which is about four feet tall. Horse mint, cow parsnip, mustang clover, another kind of uh, milkweed, California milkweed. This is a, a view of the Sierras from Mitchell Peak, which is in um, Kings Canyon National Park. And it's a 360 degree view. Scarlet gilia along the trail. Bridges gilia. Corn lily. Different views of pine drops. Hairy arnica. And a spider lupin. You can see why it's called spider lupin by the the leaf pattern, it's uh, very spidery. Chaparral clematis, and it 
it's on the um, right picture, it's climbing into a redbud tree. And this is the seed pod. Woolly pod milkweed. Here's uh, several bugs on this plant. I had the pleasure of hiking with the California Native Plant Society after the Creek Fire in an area called Jose Basin. And there were several people on the hike that were much more knowledgeable than I was about flowers. And they, we found 12 different varieties of monkey flowers in that one area. This is called Five Spot, Meadow Form, Meadow Foam, <clears throat> Abrams Onion, Harlequin Lupin. And you can see that the flowers are just coming out of the ash in the ground. This is Orange Lupin, Bastard Toad Fox, and Jose Creek was running. There were a lot of flowers along the creek, and yet you can see in the top left corner that they're the devastation of the fire. Cream cups. Foothill owl's clover. Bolander's monkey flower. Yellow stone crop. This is Stevenson Creek. It flows out of Shaver Lake into San Joaquin River. And so they can control the amount of flow. This was in May of 2018. And then we went in um, May of 2019. And there was a lot more flow. And you can see Dale kind of on the middle right between the bushes to give you a contrast as to the size of the falls. Blue elderberry, rosy fairy lantern. I'm just noticing that the Calif at the end of the word California native plant with an E, and that means endemic, and that means it only grows in California. Rose clover, Applegate's paintbrush, very tiny mountain clarkia, my fingernail in the to show you the size of it. Another milkweed, purple milkweed. Common media, foothill larkspur, another larkspur species. Ethereal sphere. Hairless gapping cachelia. Twining rhodia. On a media, you can see in the middle bottom how the stem of the twining brodia twines around other flower stems. This is um, seed pods of the lamation. Some kind of butterfly chrysalis, I don't know, but it's on larkspur. Woodhill clover. Still in on the hike to um, Stevenson Creek Falls, bush poppy, bush anemone, live forever, miniature miner's lettuce, flannel bush, common media and Indian paintbrush, field bindweed which is non-native, but can be invasive. And obviously the farmers don't like them in their uh, fields because they'll bind up the um, farm equipment. California thistle. California wild grape. Tomcat clover, one of the reasons I I'm showing you so many pictures. It just astonishes me the variety that we have in, in just the central Sierras and how wonderful it is. Mountain dogwood. This is on the way to Shaver Lake. Um, and this is near Shaver Lake at Music Mountain. Uh, Grand Mountain dandelion. And then this is... Um, 
turn off from Shaver Lake and the Dinky Lakes, Lakes Wilderness, a uh, lake called Swede Lake. And this is Quill Leaf Louisia, Kennedy Buckwheat, Western Snake Root. Now we're at Balsam Four Bay, which is above Shaver Lake. And um, this is a Bird's Foot Lotus. Sierra Nevada Lotus, Bitter Cherry, Sierra Gooseberry. That is edible, the gooseberry. And this mountain pink currant um, creates edible berries. And there's an osprey nest at Balsam Four Bay. And here's an osprey coming into the nest. Yellow rayed gold fields, slender flowered gilia, Utah service berry, early everlasting with a ruddy copper butterfly, spreading dogbane with a wild forget me not moth on the right side, the black and white moth. Kirkhoff Lake is upstream from Millerton. It has a bald eagle nest there. This is called a tincture plant. Yellow mariposa lily. Common catchfly. Nelly Lake, which is uh, about six miles above the western end of Huntington Lake. American Laurel, McCloskey's Violet. And these uh, are, this was, I uh, took a picture of the dragonfly in the middle on the left at the top. And then when I came home and um, zeroed in on it, I realized all the brown on the grass or the reeds were dragonfly carcass and larva and immature dragonflies. It was a little bit like a horror film. Lemon catchfly, snow plant, marsh marigold, orange peel. You can see why it's called an orange peel fungus. Subalpine fleabane. Another pussy paw with a much darker flower on it. Sierra stick seed, which is very similar to the forget me nots that we have in our garden. Dwarf honeysuckle. Bush chinquapin, which has a nasty seed pod. Um, pine wavy leaf uh, paintbrush, mountain blue penstemon, mountain bitterweed, sorry about the phone, alpine Louisia, spreading phlox, bedrock mortar, where the Indians used a pestle to grind their acorns into flour. Subalpine shooting star, a flitellaria butterfly on a Sierra ragwort, Tori's blue eyed Mary. It's uh, it's very tiny. You can tell from my finger, but it just makes a carpet of blue because there's so many of them. Upper Twin Lakes is a hike off of. Kaiser Pass Road, which is off the end of uh, Huntington Lake. And it has as many wildflowers as uh, you can imagine, uh, as any hike um, in, uh, excuse me, as any hike on this side. Bigelow Sneezeweed. 
monument plant. And um, this flower is just right along the stem and you don't even notice it unless you get up close to the flower, uh, up close to the plant. Wax currant, which also produces a edible berry. Forked wave leaf paintbrush. Bender's meadow rue. California pal palimonium. Bishop's cap, you can see on the right picture the, the flower of this plant. It's the same color as the plant, so it's hard to see. Bolander's loco weed, meadow rue and sneeze weed, a different kind of mariposa lily, mountain bluebells, mountain penny royal, a white spreading flax, phlox, red elderberry flowers, Western wallflower, a field of shooting stars along the trail, false Solomon seal, blue flax, lower twin lakes with shooting stars, woolly sunflower and paintbrush, Sierra Luisia, woolly mule's ears, Some of these um, plants and wildflowers are, were used medicinally by the native Indians. And this is one of them. They use the roots of this plant. So frequently, if you see a, a grouping of them that might have been where the Indians were at one time, but I um, don't make any recommendations of anything medicinally or edible. Wood fern, the leopard lily in the middle top there, and the paintbrush. Pink stick seed, because it has a sticky seed. Tory blue-eyed Mary. California valerian. Boggs shooting star. Silver leaf lupin. Silver Sierra Angelica, shrubby groundsel, and a Sierra pincushion on the right. Foothill Gilia, mountain strawberry, another kind of milkweed, narrow leaf milkweed. This is near Mono Hot Springs, and we were visiting there. This is my grandson, and it was just filled with these garter snakes and. I asked him if they didn't bite him, and he said, yes, they did, but it didn't hurt. Yellow evening primrose blooms in the evening, and then um, it also is another variety that blooms during the day. Scale bud, and this has uh, got Bass Lake in the background. Convergent lady beetles. If you're up in the mountains at the right time, you can see these groupings of lady beetles. Deer brush, white globe lily, golden brodia, large leaf lupin, and the large tree in the back is a sugar pine. Sierra morning glory, also a California California native plant that's endemic to California. Thick leaf lotus. And then the seed pods on the right is part of the pea, uh, pea family. Western blue flag. Wild rose. This is a fire lookout um, near Bass Lake and it has a beautiful view. Tarweed, this is um, in um, the Nelder Grove of the uh, near fish camp on your way to uh, 
uh, Yosemite, and it's a giant sequoia. Chaparral whitethorn, western azalea, western wallflower, and this is um, Cattle Mountain, the view of Banner and Ritter, which are in the Sierra Crest. Pussy Paws, Shaggy Hackweed, Turpentine, this is a um, seed pod of this flower. Sierra Stonecrop, Sticky chink foil, a bug again. Senten Sentinel Dome, Mountain Pride and Penstemon, and Indian Paintbrush, all on top of Sentinel Dome. Pine Mat Manzanita, and this is in Yosemite. I didn't mention that. Sierra Nevada Lotus, Whisper Brush. Mountain Violet, uh, Illouette Falls, which you can see if you hike up to Vernal Falls, but you can also hike up to the top of Illouette Falls. It was just loaded with wildflowers. This is a, a green leaf manzanita, but it has a gall. The red that's being created on the leaves is created by a an aphid, and the, that's the Manzanita's reaction to that aphid on it. Gary's Lovage. California Blushing Monkey Flower. Lane's Monkey Flower with a, on the right there, there's a bug butt come sticking out. Arnica. Sassafrage. Washington Lily, which I'd never seen anywhere. This was along the trail to Illouette Falls. Rose Meadow Sweet Spirea. Narrow Leaf Lotus. Pink Alum Root. Common Yarrow. Bridges Penstemon. Broadleaf Lotus. American bird's foot trefoil, trefoil, sorry. California cone flower. This is in Crane's Flat in um, Yosemite. Water parsley, there's a little meadow there. It had a variety of flowers. Common self heal. Glen Allen Falls is a hike out of Tuolumne Meadows in along the Tuolumne River. And here's the Tuami River with Tuami Meadows, which I understand is um, filled with water right now because of all of our snowfall. snowfall. Oval leaf bucked buckwheat. Sierra fence lizard. This is um, a hike in uh, out of Tuami Meadows in Yosemite. And uh, Ansel Adams had a nice picture of this cathedral peak. Mountain monkey flower, western mountain aster. Now we're on the other side of the Sierras. This is um, Mount Whitney in the through the Mobius Arch in the Alabama Hills. And we're going to travel from south to north on the east side of the Sierras. One of the things Dale liked to do is um, take pictures of bighorn sheep. They were difficult to find. You could only find them in the the uh, winter when they came down out of the snow, when they were up in the mountains there at 13 and 14,000 feet, and they looked just like the rocks that they're among. Chemise, oh. 
this is kind of a high desert look because uh, that's what the other side of the Sierras are, the high desert. Uh, Gia Sage. Scarlet Globe Mallow. Brown Eyes. It's a primrose family. Desert Plume. Gray Ball Sage. Western Desert Penstemon. Wild Heliotrope. Beaver Tail Cactus. Brittle Bush. Red Stem Fillery. Another Pussy Paw look, kind of the elongated blossom. Desert Calico, and then the yellow flowers are the Pringles woolly sunflower. Prickly Poppy. Western Wallflower with longer petals than the other was. White Leia. Whitney monkey flower, some burrows in the um, Owens Valley there with the Sierras in the background. Tuttle Creek Ashram. This is a hike out of the um, Owens Valley up into a canyon. And a man in the um, 1920s had this built. It's in the shape of a cross. And uh, he thought he and his wife would spend time there and she didn't like the hike or the road up there. And so it was abandoned and it's just empty inside now. Giant woolly star, apricot mallow, a friend helped us locate a bald eagle nest And there's Dale with the bald eagle nest almost directly above his head, high in, high in that tree. A rubber rabbit brush with Mount Tom in the background. Bigelow coreopsis. Desert ceanothus. Fiesta flower. Desert Pincushion, Monk's Hood, Owl's Claw, Brewer's Angelica, White Stick Weed, Wild Iris, Yellow Tack Stem. Split Mountain is in the Sierras there. It's a, it's a hard hike. Western snake root. This is um, out of Big Pine, the town of Big Pine, and there are several lakes there and they're called one through seven. And then there's a couple others. But the Temple Craig in the background is a, a popular climbing rock, climbing area. The fifth lake with shooting stars. Brewer's Mountain Heather, King Sandwort, Sierra Gentian with a bug butt again, Ranger's Buttons, Western Rose Root, Mushroom, Cushion Buckwheat, Alpine Sheep Sorrel, a banded woolly bear, caterpillar for I'm not sure what, a rose hip from a flower, a rose. This is a seed pod on this mahogany, curl leaf mountain mahogany. Eaton's firecracker. Summit Lake. This is also in that area with the seven lakes and uh, on the right side, there's a little carpet, and it's a carpet of monkey flowers that are very tiny. 
arrowhead butterweed. Goat's beard, heavenly blue, bog wintergreen, false hellebore, the interior rose, Kelly's lily, Sierra arnica, Penny royal. Wandering Fleabane. This is Sabrina Lake, which is a lake that you can drive to with some penstemon in the front. And then this is a hike from Sabrina Lake, Blue Lake. Lots of wildflowers. Lemon paintbrush. And then above that lake is Hungry Packer Lake with Brewer's Mountain Heather on the side. This is a little elephant's head and you can see from the blow up on the right side that it looks like an elephant head. There's a close up scarlet penstemon, swamp onion, Pine Creek Canyon, which is north of Bishop and, and uh, then in towards the Sierras. This is the only picture I have that Dale and either Dale or I didn't take. And it's a friend of ours that lives in Bishop. And he uh, goes out with these guys that hunt mountain lion. And this was mountain lion that was treed. Wild peach bush and uh, granite park uh, is an area up in the Sierras. I don't even remember what it's above. Oh, it's above Honeymoon Lake. Grass of Parnassus. And this little guy was up at 11,000 feet, a toad. Willow weed and a fern bush, scarlet monkey flower, tundra aster with a requisite bug, rock creek, which is a wonderful hike to see wildflowers. And you start, the trailhead starts at 10,000 feet. So there's not a lot of climb to it. Alpine flames, long lake with paintbrush and larkspur in front. Alpine Buttercup, Alpine Goldenrod, Pyramid Peak, Anderson's Aster, Sulphur Flower, which is a buckwheat, Coulter's Daisy, Crimson Columbine, Fireweed, Giant Red Paintbrush, Mono willow, it's a willow bush. Natal's Lenanthus. Pearson's paintbrush. Ranger's buttons. Single head golden bush. Sierra soda straw. If you see westerns, the the good guy will get in the water and he'll have a straw that he uses like a snorkel. And it must come from the Sierra soda straw because it's a, maybe a hollow, the stem of the flower is hollow. Kind of handy that they would have them near. Slender chink foil, mountain marsh larkspur, wandering daisy, western Labrador tea, Makiki. McGee Lake, we took this hike in 2017 when it was a big snow year, and this is in August. So I can imagine it looks like this or even more this year. But along the way, there were Alpine Columbine, Sierra Daisy, Thimbleberry, which um, 
grows a edible berry, white rain orchid. Convict Lake, which is a drive up just south of Mammoth. Blue elderberry, which are just like what we have here where they milk, make el elderberry jelly or, or you have your elderberry flower wine. Bridges Penstemon, Lamation, Heartleaf Arnica, Lake Geneva, which is a hike south of Mammoth. Buckwheat, rosy buckwheat, alpine gentian, wax currants, which were edible, shrubby chinkfoil. This is a seed pod of this Whitney loco weed, and you could shake it and you could actually hear the seeds inside here. Tufas at Mono Lake, which is on the other side of Yosemite. And this is a common uh, position for me, taking pictures of uh, woolly sunflowers on top of Mammoth Mountain. This is the end of my program. And I'd just like to say I've never done it on Zoom. And I think it's actually more interesting for me to do it in front of a live audience because I can get the reactions of you and answer questions on the spot. So um, it, it seemed a little dry even to me, um, but I hope that you've enjoyed it. And now I'm available for a Q and A. Well, Sharon, let me say what an amazing, amazing collection of photos of animals and flowers um, and just the mountains and trees. Um, someone commented, which I agree with completely, is, boy, we can take our Sierra Nevadas for granted in the area. And I appreciate, I was looking at all the CNPs, California native plants, and what a beautiful and lovely resource we have. And I was actually a little amazed looking at Millerton, you know, I've driven by it how many times and how close it is. And I think of it as sort of this, oh, kind of boring little lake, but look at how much and the animals and the flowers. And that just shows how I don't literally stop and take the time to appreciate that. Um, right. I also you had no idea we had that many bald eagles around here. Right, all. right. So um, I did have a question, uh, which is curious is now when you're out and about, do you uh, know those flowers and allow those plants on the top of your head? Or is that something you have to go back and research after you get your pictures? Well, that's a good question. And when I started this process about 10 years ago, there was no, uh, there were no apps that I could use as resources. So, and I was kind of fresh in the field. So I would come home and I had 10 wildflower books and I would go through them page by page, looking for a picture that would match. And then as I've gone, as I have, um, gone through the process I've gotten better because I know more and now there's actually apps on your phone that you can take a picture and it almost always accurately tells you what the what the flower is so one of the ones that I recommend is a one called iNaturalist uh, iNaturalist wonderful okay. and um I noticed you were talking about taking a lot of hikes and trails. Um, just let people know the library does carry books, uh, a number of books on hiking trails in California and various parts of the state. So please use that as a resource. But do you have a resource that you like for finding good trails? Especially, I think sometimes people want to get those a uh, little less popular where you can kind of really get out into nature by yourself a little bit anything or websites or locations? you know I don't I don't know any websites um, but I think the books that you mentioned that are in the library probably have 
um, a lot of good references for hikes. And I know when I have gone to ranger stations in different areas, they always have good recommendations. And just friends or look at a map and then Google it and say, you know, how do I get to Twin Lake? And then you, you figure it out. Yeah, a little exploring probably gets you um, some good now, um, do you have a favorite uh, trail or location that you just, you can't stop going back? You enjoy it so much. I, I would say on this side of the Sierras, Twin Lakes out of, uh, off of Kaiser Pass Road, it's above Huntington Lake, so it's a bit of a drive. And then it's a bit of a hike to get there. I think it's about four miles, which would be eight miles round trip. And there's a lot of elevation gain, but it's in the, in the summer, it's just filled with wildflowers. So you can imagine that in the spring, when things are greening up, that's when you will see wildflowers around Millerton. And about the time they start drying up, if you go up around Shaver Lake, you'll get um, wildflowers there. And as those are drying up and then you go up to this Twin Lake hike in July or August, and that's when the wildflowers are there. So the flowers kind of come as the elevation, you know, as the higher elevation is. Um, I had a question, which I thought was interesting, is you've probably seen a lot of before and after due to the Big Creek fire, which was so devastating, and also the drought. Um, can you maybe comment on some of the rebound in some of these areas, how it's going, or something that maybe um, surprised you or just kind of let us know out here what you've seen? Well, I know there was a fire over on the east side when I was uh, a young adult and was told that it would take 100 years for the forest to come back, which is kind of depressing because that's beyond all of our lifetimes. But I was um, impressed when we went to the, the fire with the California Native Plant Society, did this fire follower trip. I was impressed at the number of wildflowers we found and the like the oak shrubs and trees had new growth at the base of them. It was like the tops had gotten burnt, but the roots were still hardy and there and trying to come back. And so it's it's not going to look like a green forest probably in our lifetimes, but Mother Nature is doing its best to come back and 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 live. It does surprise you and you were showing us the east side of the Sierras and you know the so dry and the mountain face, but there those plants are just peeking through, as you say. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a number of comments here from people on thanking you for sharing such beautiful um, photos that you've taken. Uh, I imagine your back gets a little sore by the end of the day sometimes, <laughs> taking all those close-ups. Yeah. Um, did have oh another question what do you have the um, most surprised find you had oh I can't believe I finally got a photo or got home and realized it was something um, truly unique or something you did not expect almost every time I go out I find a new flower and that always thrills me and um, the variety of flowers that are out there um, it, it, uh, there's probably a lot more that I haven't discovered, but uh, it just is kind of an ongoing, um, excitement. Well, it, it, it doesn't ever get old, does it? No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> it really does. Well, thank you so much. Um, what a beautiful presentation and uh, a lot of work and a lot of photos to go through. Uh, thank you so much for sharing with us your experiences and your husband, Dell, as well. Thank him for some of those gorgeous photos. Uh, 
not easy to get, I would presume. No. And, but what a beautiful, um, lets us appreciate what a uh, lovely place we live in and how close so much of this is. You get a lot of hiking into some of these back trails, but so much is nearby uh, that all of us can learn to appreciate. Uh, exactly. Before we do close up, um, I'm going to hand off the uh, presentation here to Roz, who will let you know about some upcoming programs uh, by the Master Gardeners. So Sharon, thank you very, very much for a wonderful presentation. And uh, Dale did take incredible photos. Um, his flying um, bald eagles and with the backgrounds of the mountains were just spectacular. And one thought that I just have about it is uh, it's hard to believe that so many of those flowers grow in both the foothills and the mountains right behind our home. So thank you again for a lovely presentation. And uh, for the other people who are viewing right now, I'd like to share some upcoming classes with you. So let me start my uh, slideshow for you. So on August 5th at Betty Rodriguez Library, we're going to be having cool weather veggies. So if you want to grow some vegetables in the fall and the winter, you'd want to attend that. On September 10th at the Woodward Park Library, uh, we'll have a presentation in person on wildlife habitat. And the week, uh, two weeks after, on September 23rd, we'll be doing spring bulbs at the Woodward Park Library. Um, sorry for the misspelling. October 7th, olive curing at the Garden of the Sun. And on October 21st, I'll be doing a uh, succulent pumpkin class. The cost will be $50, but you'll be coming home with a uh, beautifully decorated succulent pumpkin that you can use for the fall. Um, on October 28th, it'll be a mini pumpkin uh, class for kids. The cost is $10 at the Garden of the Sun. And on November 18th at uh, 10 a.m., we'll be doing toxic plants uh, for animals. Uh, and the focus will be on cats, dogs, and horses. Uh, and that will be, you know, I have that as GOS, but it's at Woodward Park Library. Um, native plants will not be offered that day. And December 2nd and 3rd, we'll be having a wreath class, and the cost will be $60. That will be at GOS and it's Robbie Cranch's annual class, which I believe is her 26th year of doing it. And then on December 9th, we will be having orchard pruning. Um, and that will be going through trees as well as uh, grapes and other things in the orchard. So our in-person classes that will be PowerPoints are gonna be at either Betty Rodriguez or Woodward Park Library, the demonstration classes will be at the Garden of the Sun. Um, and then lastly, uh, if you want to get in touch with the Master Gardeners, our helpline uh, is where you can email questions at um, mgfresno at ucanr.edu. And if you'd like to get on our mailing list, the um, the link is down below, and that will tell you about upcoming events and gardening education classes. And one last thing, if there are classes that you would like to have either by Zoom or in person or at the Garden of the Sun, please write to us and uh, give us some ideas for classes that you might like. So with that, I'll stop my share. And um, thank you again for coming to our um, flora and fauna of the Sierras. Sharon and Laura, thank you for a um, wonderful presentation today.
And again, I just wanted to say thank you to the Fresno Master Gardeners, uh, Sharon Roz. We have had so many good Zoom programs and in-person programs. Just a reminder, this program was recorded. Uh, we have an, all the previous Zoom programs. You can also access this at the Fresno County Public Library YouTube website and also the uh, Fresno Master Gardener website. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We hope to see you soon. Uh, take care and try to stay out of this heat. Have a good day.